always have an orthodontist friend in, out where I am uh -huh. and who's in the, uh, some cranial things and he just uh, he sent a couple people over because he gets re regional referrals because he does some manipulation and the point is is that he's asked me to section a bridge or something that you know tied the midline you know, across the upper midline. So, so when you say section, what does that cut mean? Cut it, you know, release it. So you know, they have, it. they can move? Exactly. So and it then, would be a bridge that would go from one side of like the... Like, say, cuspid to cuspid? Right. Yeah, yeah. Or, or even a whole rehab or, or... It'll be one whole piece, so there's nothing yeah. in the center to bend? It, it's usually a bridge uh, or something like orthodontics, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's very fixed. And so when you cut it, do you put rubber there, or do you put something that holds it together, well, or is it we, just two separate pieces now? We had a, we had a, a lab um, when we replaced it. We had a lab that made a little attachment so it could move a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, because they were missing front teeth. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, it, uh, um, it stayed. It stays, they didn't have a return of uh, headaches. Right. Mm -hmm. So After what we were you experiencing it? with these folks that were coming in? There, you'd heard from a, you had a friend that was a cranial, did cranial and orthodontics. Yeah. Orthodontics. And these people, after getting the, um, the bridges, would right. start experiencing severe headaches. And they could, and, and usually a 20 year history, 10 year history of, you know, ever since I got this, my head was, my head mm. was hurting. <laughs> So were these people that, that were more susceptible to headaches to begin with? Did they have I headaches? Couldn't or, no? I couldn't tell you because I was just seeing them for general dentistry stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a cranial, you know. Um, not a cranial so what guy. percentage of the people that came in with headaches with the bridge and you cut it in half, did, did, did the headaches resolve? I think about everybody. I mean, in a 30 year career, I've only done it like three or four times, only because I got referrals from, this, from my buddy there in uh, Newark. So, would you suggest anybody that has a bridge and has had has headaches at all should consider having the bridge dissected? I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you go. Um, I just know that some of these people have been kind of desperate because they never got results. Mm -hmm. You know, so we sectioned it just to try it because they were that desperate. Well, what's the what's what's the downside of trying it if they've got headaches, right? Yeah. 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 So would you suggest I, I anybody with headaches that have a bridge look at that as an option? Yeah, but I don't think it's a widely known. I mean, I think you're kind of crazy if you suggest that sort of thing. Why? Oh, because oh, it's not conventional. Okay. It's not conventional stuff. Um, and, and some of those, you know, if you let that breathe enough, you know, if you've got contact and it looks good, you know, the midline's on, mm -hmm. it's connected, and then if you let it move and that bone, you let that, the bone go, goes uh, where it wants to go, mm -hmm. um, you might even see some separation there after a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. And that's a hassle. Yeah. Wow. So. So, no. But I've never, you know, i never really... I mean, this orthodontist is a, is a great orthodontist, but he's also, uh, you know, the, in the community, he's kind of a kooky guy because, uh, you know, he does things like uh, orthopedic appliances from Europe, you know, 20 years ago before other people were doing them, things like that, so. Mm -hmm. um, would you describe him as kooky? I would, I would describe him as a very uh, smart yeah. and very avant-garde. He's, uh, he's 80 years old now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's been doing cranial <clears throat> stuff for a, a while. Has he worked on you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's released uh, pterygoids and some other things in my mouth. And then, you know, through that, we've got some massage therapists, uh, massage therapists and other people out there that are into that sort of thing now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Ohio, with my prescription, and they put on gloves, they can go in and release, uh, you know, muscles around the TMJ. and. Mm -hmm. And for my money and my, you know, the, uh, that's the first thing I grab for in TMJ. Mm, is yeah. it pterygoids? No, it's just go to the massage therapist that knows what they're doing. Uh -huh. And for your treatment dollars, you'll get more results Well, with that than, you know, you will. You know, you can spend thousands of dollars diagnosing a TMJ problem, right? Well, this is, this is my, you know, the way I look at TMJ. And I've, I made a... I made a video on this that I'd love to show you. Okay. It's on video. But with this work that we're doing, we see not everybody with TMJ, but a lot of them we see just almost immediately. Like you'll see, you'll feel the, 
the, the, the sphenoid and the skull release mm -hmm. with the balloon inflation, and then immediately people will track, and they'll and their their clicking will go away. Mm -hmm. And so it took me a while to kind of figure out why what's really happening mm -hmm. there. And I had heard some explanations from some other folks doing endonasal work that I wasn't completely happy with. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this bone here, the mandible, mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere. There's no sutures in it. I mean, it's basically going to stay the same size regardless. And these um, temporal bones, they float on either side of the sphenoid, mm -hmm. and so they can move. Right. And so we also see a lot of people that have balance disorders, and you, you can see people that you know aren't real coordinated, and so you get some issues with the semicircular canals and the, the uh, cerebellum there. Um, but what, what I see is when people open their mouth, you'll see in particular some people their, their mandibular um, um, condyle will really pop out. Right. And they open up, it just sure. pops out. And so the skull actually is too narrow for the mandible. And that happens, Weston Price, who was a dentist, mm -hmm. um, you sure. know, he traveled the world, he found yep. that people that ate a lot of refined foods and right. cooked foods, right, right. they didn't get the nutrients or whatever, and you have right. a shrinking skull phenomenon. Right. And so when the skull shrinks, you have that palate starts to kind of lift up and the teeth crowd. And um, right. that whole skull structure narrowing is going to cause a lot of problems with the jaw as well. So the point being is that um, I'm here, I just trained um, Damon to do this work. Mm -hmm. Jaw people, you know, massage is kind of like treating the, 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 the smoke. This is like treating the fire mm -hmm. because the muscles are responding to a structural imbalance mm -hmm. there. Right. A lot of there, there's a lot of dentists that f that that focus on the way the teeth fit together. Mm -hmm. You know, the front end, if you will, out here, mm -hmm. um, and occlusal. You know, Pete Dawson and uh, St. Pete. Um, you know, is a big proponent of you know just perfecting the occlusion and, mm -hmm. and all that. I do know that when you start to change the sphenoid bone and the way those rotate and the way they're their place is that you can make huge differences out here in, in front. Bite. So right. why not change that first? For sure. Well, that's why I say, you know, I mean, I, I you know, in chiropractic, the uh, if if their muscles are out of balance, if their bite's out of balance, if they're holding, you know, this joint in a position that's going to hurt, mm -hmm. or you know, it, it keeps it from hurting. You know, um, when you move the bones, their muscles, you know, the the muscles will pull it. What you're saying is the muscles will pull it back out of place. No, the if teeth, if their bite is off, yeah, right, or an appliance is off, and you move the skull back to a more normal position, right, right, and so now the teeth aren't fitting together correctly, right. So that appliance is going to basically pull them back or more narrow, right. And so we see people's bite change with the treatment, and they feel better, right. And then they go back and use right. their appliance, and then they go back and they don't feel. But so you know, and and case in point. Um, a lot of dentists make upper hard acrylic appliances, which again won't let the bone, you know, breathe, won't let mm -hmm. it move in and out, right? right? So I don't make uppers, I don't like them. I make lowers, mm -hmm. first of all. They, you know, people can talk with them a little bit better. It's not, you know, um, but that's the main reason why. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, I had a, a lot of TMJ neck pain when I first started in dentistry 30 years ago. And one day, um, and I had an upper, um, and it broke, you know, and I sat on it or something, and I put it back in and snapped it back in. Yeah, your TMJ. Isn't that funny? Yeah. But, you know, Bill Pleichert is, you know, he's 80 years old, but, you know, um, and he brought this to my attention just by, you know, because he, we're buddies, but he, uh, um, and, and all the Weston Price work and stuff he's made me aware of and all that. Okay. Um, but the... Uh, the sectioning of these, because I was, you know, like, you, mean, you want me to cut this? Are you serious? Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. going to get sued here or uh -huh. whatever. And I cut it, and a couple of these people just almost came out of the chair. Like, oh, my God, what did you do? We just better. we just cut it. That's yeah. all we did. That's great. So I'm just saying that, you know, it's... It, a, it, it's, it's, it's evolving in dentistry. Dentistry is really, there's some changes that yeah. are coming on. I know there's a doctor... Um, couple doctors where we're actually doing adult palate expansion mm -hmm. with patients. You know, people that just, yeah. you know, they're so crowded, but they, they never thought that you could do adult palate expansion. They thought it was just in children. Right. But they cut it instead of a full term, they cut it to a quarter term. Right. 
and it works. Just and do it I slower. Did, I got fit with a palate expander just to check it out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, literally, my front teeth started to gap open. Right. So it definitely moves. We've had, oh, yeah. I've had some patients where they were but adults. Do you, yeah. And we do the combination of the inflations and the palate expansion. Just telling him about. Do you feel it? That was one of my questions about palate expansions. Like I went and let my daughter see an orthodontist who did palate expansions, and I you saw didn't? a kit. I wouldn't. Yeah. That was one of my questions for you. What kind of stuff gets messed up when you see it? It could be a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I just right. don't have enough information, and I didn't want to experiment on my daughter before I knew more. Well, I haven't seen the um, the drastic changes with facial, you know, expansion. Uh -huh. like I've seen with people that have had palate expansion. Yeah. And if you look at um, some of the doctors, there's, I wish I could remember, this guy actually just passed away, mm -hmm. and he was an amazing um, orthodontist, and uh, he basically was the pioneer. And they thought, everybody thought he was a quack. He so he started palate doing expansion. palate expansion on adults, and he, if you go to his website, there's like tons of, well, I don't even know if the website's up anymore, there's like all these pictures of before and after, drastic. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have wide faces afterwards, and he mm -hmm. talks about how much happier they are, mm -hmm. their sinuses clear up, their headaches. It sounds like testimonials you and I would uh -huh. would look for. So I think there's an application there if you've well, got someone that has personally, a Personally, I feel like I want one on my left palate. It's, I can feel this toed in, so to speak, on my left. It's not a big deal to go get fit with when I have mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I'll pop it in before I go to bed at night, mm -hmm. and I'll wake up in the morning and take it out. And it, it, I feel mm -hmm. a lot more right. open. Sometimes if you, you can tweak it exactly how wide you want it to be, you know, you want mm -hmm. a little bit or a lot or whatever. <laughs> You know, and do you and feel do you feel relapse though? I mean, uh, you rebound, re relapse. Like you expand it. What you know, they overexpand children, yeah. and then they let them kind of come back in. Right. You know, so you see kids that are you know like their maxilla is a lot wider. Their their mandible, knowing that it's going to come. You know, the muscles are going to bring it back in some. Well, that's that's where I think FCR would really be a a gift in well, that region. You know, I'm, I'm in that age group. I got a lot of kids who are going through palate expanders. And, you know, yes. you look at them before yeah. and then after. And some of it looks like maybe they go too far. I don't know. I'll see when they're 17 when I see these kids. Maybe there'll be some retraction. But there's a girl, you know, last night, one of Nora's, I don't know, she's 10 or 11. I could tell she had palate expansion. Sure. Um, you know, but it's you just know a lot wider than we're used to seeing in America. The whole uh, Weston Price thing is this lack of nutrition and, and uh, you know, is that the supposedly the uh, genetic expression of growth mm -hmm. in children nowadays it just isn't coming forth. There's very few white kids that I see that have room for their wisdom teeth. Yeah. You know, two generations ago, we pretty much did. Right. Um, so the nutrition and whatever lack of activity, Absolutely. I don't know, yeah. you know, is, is that... Uh, well, I've always thought that there's an inflammatory reaction that happens with, you know, more insulin, you know, more more hormonal imbalances, and it shows up a lot at night when people sleep. Mm -hmm. And the big thing is they become mouth breathers, mm -hmm. and so you get these mouth breathers that narrow the skull, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and that's the connection that I've always looked for. And if we can and you get can these see people that, breathing you know, through you, their nose, exactly. And that's Fulford, you, know, you know, he would say that if you're not breathing through your nose, you're only half alive. And that was the first thing he wanted to do was to get these folks breathing through their nose. And he talked about the cribiform plate. Mm -hmm. When you go, when you're, when you're not breathing well through your nose, basically air can't get to the higher chambers. Mm -hmm. And the cribiform plate is a real thin membrane. And your CSF basically flows right through that area. Mm -hmm. And you have an ionization of your CSF through the air transfer right. through that membrane. Mm -hmm. And when your, your CSF is more ionized, it's more able to absorb oxygen. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that, that was what, um, and he didn't know about this work that we're doing here, but that's, he has a book that he wrote that, that describes that pretty, uh, pretty in detail. How do you feel about that? Oh, I believe that's exactly the case. Anybody who breathes through their mouth, and that's one of the problems with uh, even the, or that's one of the benefits of a CPAP. Mm -hmm. So it just gets people going through their nose. Yeah. And that's it's, another, so the question is, does CPAP really help oxygenation through the blood, or does it just increase airflow through the nose? Right. And then so right. people feel more revived from CPAP just going through the nose. Well, look at the yoga practices that people do. Mm -hmm. 
you know, through the nose. There's, when you hyperventilate through your nose, there's, there's a complete difference. Like you actually feel like you've got energy just coursing through your body. I have found in healing, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. FunctionalCranialRelease.com